Hello and welcome to part two of my Creeping in Warcraft 3 series. In the last part, we focused on the behavior of AI within the game and the different ways we can interact with it and use it to our advantage. If you haven't seen part one, I recommend that you go watch it first. It will help you understand some of the things that we're going to go over in this video. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on the way each of the four races creep, their advantages, disadvantages, routes, and strategies. I'll also be covering some of the different builds and how those builds will affect your style of creeping in-game. Some races go into more detail than others when it comes to executing great creeping patterns. If you'd like to just skip right to your races section, I'll leave some timestamps in the description below. Alright, let's get into it. In the last video we were speaking about the things you want to check to gauge how well you're creeping in Warcraft 3. There were three words, speed, efficiency, and safety. Let's go into a bit more depth on these three important characteristics and why they're so important. Time is a very valuable resource in any RTS game. You rely on your speed of play. You only have so much time before your opponent decides to attack or you decide to attack your opponent. When the clock is ticking, time is against you. You need to get as much creeping done in the time given as possible. Efficiency is important because although the game clock is a resource in the game, managing your gold and lumber economy properly is the key behind any winning strategy. Whether it be spending gold to heal at your shop, or lumber spent on workers to help you finish off a camp, you must be able to weigh the losses from the gains and manipulate them into your favor when allocating resources to creeping, knowing you can or can't afford to use them. Safety now becomes your more obvious characteristic. Your opponent's job in the game is to kill you. When given the opportunity, they will happily take it. The goal is to be able to creep safely, avoiding opportunities for the opponent to catch you off guard while also staying cost and time efficient. Don't be scared, be prepared. With those ideas in mind, let's move on to some terminology. Creep route. The order in which you take camps to level your heroes up. This varies from game to game and race to race. The goal of a good creep route is to find an order of creep camps that gets your hero to the desired level in a timely fashion, while also sculpting the map for the optimal creeping late game. Creep Jack, an attack on the enemy player while they are trying to creep. This will give the attacking player a huge advantage in the fights, as their enemy has been damaged by creeps and is out of position. Experience. Experience is gained in Warcraft when a hero or allied forces kill any creep, enemy unit, and sometimes enemy buildings. The enemy buildings that give experience are upgraded human towers, orc watchtowers as well as burrows, undead ziggurats, halls of the dead, and black citadels, and any night elf building that requires a wisp to build also gives experience. In order to gain experience, your hero must be alive, and you must get the last hit on the unit. Not the majority of the damage, the last hit. Once you have a second or third hero, the closest hero to the dying unit will gain the experience. If all or none of the heroes are by the unit, the experience will be split equally between all of the heroes. Once the hero reaches level 5, it will stop gaining experience from creeps. However, if the hero is in range of the dying creeps, he will take an equal split of the experience, but will not gain any. So keep your level 5 or above heroes away from any secondary hero trying to creep. There's also some diminishing returns as you level your heroes up and some bonus experience as you upgrade your main building, but those stats are a little bit confusing and I'm not going to go into them. Instead I'll leave a link here to all the specifics in the description down below. Part 1. Undead. Undead is a race that relies heavily on their hero's ability to carry them, thus their hero's levels must be sufficient. Because of the strength of the undead heroes, many other races will try to stop the undead from creeping, making speed and unpredictability a necessity to any successful undead creep route. Despite the difficulty at the start of the game, undead becomes the fastest race at creeping late game due to the power of the Orb of Corruption and Destroyers vs. Creeps. Some useful items you're going to want to use to help your creeping are as followed. Rod of Necromancy. Rod of Necromancy is sold at the Undead's Tomb of Relics and costs 150 gold. It requires any corpse to activate. These corpses can be generated from any non-mechanical or flying unit, as well as graveyards and critters found across the map. 
When used, the rod spawns two skeleton warriors with 180 hit points that last 40 seconds. The rod of necromancy is essential to soaking up damage received from creeps due to undead's lack of healing in the early game. Sacrificial Skull The Sacrificial Skull is an item sold at the Tomb of Relics that requires a graveyard to purchase. It costs 50 gold and when used it produces a small patch of blight on any area of the map. Blight grants all undead units 2 hit point per second regeneration while standing on it, making the Sacrificial Skull a great item for creeping. There are three basic opening build orders with undead. I won't go into the specifics of how to execute these build orders, but I will leave a link in the description to a guide for each of them. The three build orders are 1. Fast Fiends, Slow Death Knight 2. Fast Death Knight, Slow Fiends and 3. Ghouls Each of these three builds have a different style of play and creeping. The Fast Fiends, Slow Death Knight build is great for taking big camps early. You have two fiends by the time your Death Knight comes out and are able to summon skeletons right away at your graveyard, and you can even buy a Sacrificial Skull. The downside of this build is due to the lateness of your hero, your creep route can become very predictable. The Fast Death Knight Slow Fiends build order is great for either harassing your opponent or creeping very passively. Because you only have your Death Knight and Skeletons to creep early, it's easy to maneuver around the map and hide from any opposing forces. Creep routes with this build generally take a little more planning and practice because you really have to know what's possible with so little. A big part of your creep route planning with this build order is being able to get skeletons due to your lack of an early graveyard. This means knowing where the critters are on each map and trying to use your scout acolyte to find and kill these critters early for your death knight to spawn skeletons from later. One trick with killing these critters takes a bit of luck. Critters have 10 hit points and your scout acolyte does 9 to 10 damage. So there's a 50% chance that your Acolyte will one-shot the critter, and a 50% chance that it will take two. If your Acolyte manages to hit the critter once without killing it, the critter will start running away from your Acolyte in the direction that you hit it. This enables you to slightly move where the corpse of the critter will be, and give your Death Knight a more direct path to your desired creep camp. This is a very small edge, but can save a couple of seconds. The Ghoul build is normally used as a harass-heavy build. The advantage of ghouls is they're very fast, small units. They can also be sent home at any time to continue gathering lumber if they take too much damage. This makes ghouls a very independent, self-sufficient unit. Although they can't take large camps, ghouls are great at solo creeping camps without your death knight. Say you're harassing your opponent with a small group of ghouls as well as your death knight, your ghouls back at home can now be safe to go creep by themselves while simultaneously you keep your opponent from creeping. This is a difficult, multitask heavy playstyle popularized by the Korean undead FOV. Two upgrades that can help you in succeeding with this solo ghoul creeping are Backpack as well as Cannibalize. Backpack will enable you to pick up and either sell or transfer items to your hero received from creeping. Cannibalize will enable you to heal your ghouls up to full HP if you don't have access to your Death Knight's coils or aura at the moment. Part 2. Orc Orc is one of the strongest races in the early game due to the pure strength of the Blademaster. The goal of Orc creeping early is to get as strong of items as possible on your Blademaster so that he can carry you through the later game. The disadvantage of Orc when it comes to creeping is their weakness against creepjacks. They're a very positionally dependent race, meaning if their units are in a bad spot, they suffer hard. The most important item for Orc creeping is the Heal Salve. The Heal Salve is bought from the Orc's Voodoo Land and costs 100 gold for 3 charges. When used, it heals any hero or unit for 400 hit points over 45 seconds. The Heal Salve is a very costly but effective way to help your creeping. One thing to watch out for is taking more than 400 damage on each unit while creeping. This means it will take more than one salve to get your unit back up to full hit points again. The two main opening build orders for Orc are 1. Fast Barracks 2. Fast Shop The Fast Barracks build order is the safest opener, as you have faster grunts. This build order also means you can take much larger camps early. The disadvantage of this build is that your shop is much later, forcing you to either stay close by to your base for the early game, or risk going out onto the map with no ability to heal. The fast shop opener is a slightly riskier, more aggressive opener. 
Having a faster shot means faster heal salves, which enables you to venture further away from your base to either harass or do what is called item creeping. Item creeping is a strategy most effective on the Blade Master due to his strength and his ability to move around the map undetected. This strategy revolves around, as Grubby would put it, taking the cheese from the bread. You run around the map with your Blade Master by himself passively collecting items. This means only killing the big creeps from each camp, grabbing the item, and running to the next camp. This method of creeping is extremely effective to get a very stacked Blade Master early, but not overly effective at getting a high level Blade Master. Orc is also a race that relies heavily on having a quick level 3 secondary hero. Due to the urgency for this, you will normally see orcs either harass or solo item creep with their blade master for most of the game, while using their army to try to creep their secondary hero up as quickly as possible. Part 3. Night Elf It may not seem this way, but Night Elf actually has some of the worst ability to heal early game. Muwells may seem bottomless, but in fact they're very limited and only regenerate for half of the game's duration. Due to this poor ability to recover from damage taken, over the years Night Elves have developed a strategy very well known as Ancient War Creeping, or AOW Creeping. AOW Creeping is an extremely useful technique that, in my opinion, takes Night Elf from the weakest race in Warcraft in terms of creeping to the strongest. Let's get into how AOW Creeping works. Creeps in Warcraft 3 have a tendency to hate aggressive buildings. Any towers, burrows, or ancients, they will attack automatically if they take damage from them. A player named Spirit Moon, sometime around 2005, learned how to abuse this mechanic. Here's how you do it. When the game starts, send a wisp to the camp you wish to creep. Be careful not to disturb the creeps and build your Ancient War somewhere close by. Knowing where you can and can't build your Ancient War is just a matter of practice and knowing how those specific creeps work. Once your Ancient War is finished, build one archer. When the archer is complete, uproot the ancient, eat a tree, and pull the creeps with your archer. Once your Ancient has hit the creeps, they will start attacking the Ancient War. One thing that's important to remember is that if any building gets the last hit on a unit or a creep, your hero will not receive any experience. So be sure to let your Archer or your hero get the final attack on the creep. The great thing about Ancient War creeping is the Ancient can be moved around and used on multiple creep camps. This takes timing and a bit of planning due to the slow movement and speed of the uprooted Ancient War. A good rule of thumb is whenever you're doing something on the map, whether it be harassing, buying items, or creeping smaller camps, always be thinking about the next big camp you're going to take with your Ancient, and start moving it there beforehand. Some builds revolve even around getting a second Ancient War early on, and setting them up on different sides of the map. This enables you to creep multiple camps in succession. This is a great style with level-dependent heroes, such as the Warden. Although Ancient War creeping can be an extremely powerful tool, it's important to know its weaknesses as well. Nenelf is a race with very little defense to early pressure. What little defense you do have is your Ancient of War as well as units built from the Ancient. Using your AOW to creep means you have neither of these critical pieces to early defense. This means good scouting is a must with Night Elf early on. Making sure to keep your Ancient of War alive during creeping is also a must. Bring repair wisps even if you don't think you'll need them. Losing your Ancient of War sometimes means losing the game. Another weakness of Ancient War Creeping is its ability to be cancelled. If your opponent can predict where you're going to put your Ancient, they can send a unit. Whether it be a worker, a ghoul, or a militia, they can then pull the creep camp onto your constructing Ancient War. This works because, again, creeps hate buildings. One way to counter this aggression is to keep a wisp close by to the Ancient War, and get the creeps to attack and follow this wisp instead. This doesn't work 100% of the time, but when it does, it can save your Ancient from being cancelled. Part 4. Human Human is a very vulnerable race in the early game, but becomes one of the most powerful races later. Due to this, you can expect going into a game with human that you're going to take some losses creeping. It's important to not become too scared with human and keep pushing forward. You can rest easy knowing that if you survive long enough and get enough creeping done that you'll be in a very good position later. One item that will help your creeping as human is the Scroll of Regeneration. The Scroll of Regeneration costs 100 gold and when used it heals every unit in an area around your hero for 225 hit points over 45 seconds. Human is a race with many small supply, low hit point units. Because of this, at times the Scroll of Regeneration can have insane value when healing. 
The main tool a human has at creeping at almost any point in the game is Call to Arms. Call to Arms is an ability used at either your first existing town hall or any upgraded town hall. The ability turns any peasant into a militia for 45 seconds. The militia are 220 hit point units that do 12 to 13 damage, the same as that of a footman. Militia is an expensive tool to help speed up your creeping, but necessary to help level up your heroes against the harass of your opponent. Human will generally have around 13 or 14 peasants, five of which are on gold, the rest on lumber. When using militia to creep, make sure to only use your lumber peasants, as gold is a limited and more demanded resource. How many militia to use on each camp is up for debate, but it's safe to say you only need to use militia for the larger camps, and save lumber economy on the smaller green camps. The most standard starter hero for human, the Archmage, is a great hero for creeping due to the ability to use water elementals to soak up the damage from creeps. When choosing less standard starting heroes with human, you must find alternate ways to tank the creep camp. Whether it be creeping a mercenary camp early for priests, getting a fast shot for scrolls of regeneration, or risking having very low heroes, peasants, and footmen. Suffice to say, if you're looking to have a heavy creeping game, the Archmage is your best choice. Aside from the standard opening build order, Human has one alternate opener that was designed completely for safer early creeping, the Fast Altar build. Human is a unique race in that they can power build with more than one worker on a building at a time. This enables you to power build your Altar of Kings at the start of the game and get almost a 50% faster starting hero. This build order allows you to creep your first camp or two virtually unharassed. As with every other build order I've talked about in this video, there's a link in the description to a video on how to execute the fast altar build with human. Thanks for watching part 2 of my Creeping and Warcraft guide. In part 3 I'll be focusing on some tricks for creeping. This should be a fun one, I'm hoping. I'd like to thank Zotac Bidu for helping me proofread some of my script for this video, as well as you guys on YouTube and Reddit for your questions and comments. As always, if there's something I got wrong or anything else you'd like me to cover, feel free to comment or send me a DM. If you're feeling motivated, please give the video a like, maybe my channel a subscribe, and you can check out my Twitch livestream at twitch.tv slash Carson. Thanks again. I'll see you guys in part three.